it's drama, it's fiction that's somewhat based on fact. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. It's always um, great to get your perspective and uh, get your expertise. And I know that you guys have a lot of great programming going on right now on True Royalty TV, all about the documentaries and the truth behind all this drama on The Crown, correct? Absolutely, it's been a busy last few weeks. I mean, when The Crown dropped, we just saw um, the searches surging across True Royalty for trying to find out the truth. You know, pretty well every scene, you want to know, did that really happen? What really went on? So we, yeah, we've been very busy at True Royalty with um, documentaries that take you inside the truth about Diana, inside the truth about the divorce, what really went on with the Queen and Princess Margaret, the truth about Prince Philip and sort of the supposed relationships. So yeah, it's been a busy few weeks, but it's been fascinating. Definitely. We've um, talked about this a lot, but I want to know what were some of the glaring mistakes in this season of The Crown for you? You know, the things that you just said, oh, no, that, you know, that is not correct. Uh, how about episode one to 10? Does that work for you? <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, no, I mean, look, it's drama, it's fiction that's somewhat based on fact. Um, and what's really interesting is this season, has caught up to my life in television. And um, a number of the people that appeared in the show this year, um, this season, are people I know very well and have worked with a lot. So the Martin Bashir interview across two episodes, um, you know, I know a lot of the people involved in that whole thing. And virtually all of it um, was, um, uh, was certainly sort of wider the mark, shall I say that. And um, um, I think they didn't even go far enough in looking at how Bashir got the interview. I mean, they sort of touched on it. You know, it was incredibly fraudulent what went on there. So I think that's one section. The other sections I think are really worrying are um, pieces that sort of damage the monarchy. So, for example, when um, Charles does the handover of Hong Kong, it appears that he takes um, Camilla for a, a holiday on the Royal Yacht Britannia. Simply not true. Um, the um, the idea that Diana was meeting Dodi, uh, sorry, Mohammed Al Fayed at the Windsor Horse Show, not true. The idea that Princess Margaret and the Queen are having stand-up rows about Peter Townsend, not true. I mean, so I could just keep going on and on and on. What the Crown is very clever at is it does take um, sort of enough fact to be able to spin up a version of the truth and i think that's the very clever thing so i think people have got to watch it with, a, with an eye to this is drama um that is based on real life events but that's the danger is how far the real life events go and that's what's been so great for us at true royalty is we can say okay you know um what really happened in the, um, after the handover of hong kong what really happened in camilla and charles's relationship you know there was sort of Andrew Parker Bowles is portrayed as this cuckolded husband um, who is watching his wife sort of play away with the, the Prince of Wales. The truth of it is, Andrew Parker Bowles was having a series of his own affairs. And, you know, that was... Um, so the um, Camilla was in many ways just being pushed back into the arms of the man that she loved originally. So lots to lots that I could go on about. Yeah. Was there anything that you feel that they did get 100% right? Oh, what did they get right? What did they get right? Look, I think, I think some of the Tony Blair stuff was quite clever. You know, that sort of the relationship between John Major and the Queen, and then the arrival of of Blair on the on the scene. I think that was sort of um, that new Labour period was was sort of quite quite well done, um, and. Um, but beyond that, I think a lot of it was, um, as I say, very clever in that it has enough truth in it to be almost truthful, but just sort of slightly missing the point, really. Um, and things like, you know, Marmaduke Hussey, who's the chairman of the BBC, wasn't told about the Diana interview. Um, the, you know, the idea that he's sort of watching it, sort of um, furious about what happened, uh, is is true he was furious about what happened but he didn't know it was coming and i think it's things like that it's the stuff that 
the detail that's so important in the truth. You know, the devil is in the detail. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What were some of the most embarrassing moments um, that the royal family sort of had to revisit uh, thanks to this season of The Crown? Well, I think we know one, don't we? Um, I think, you know, um, some I think of those... <laughs> but one really but, stands out, yeah. yeah. Some of those phone calls, I think, were moments that the royal family would probably n rather not revisit. And I'm sure, look, I'm sure most of us have had pretty ridiculous phone calls occasionally with people that we're in love with. Maybe no, not exactly that. that conversation. <laughs> but, um, uh, 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 but, you know, I look, I remember those tapes coming out when it first happened. Um, it was embarrassing then. It's embarrassing now. Um, and I think it's a... Um, it's just unfortunate they've got to live through that. The stuff that I, you know, weirdly though, I um, didn't find that some of the most awkward scenes to watch. What I felt was very difficult was the interviews, uh, sorry, the phone calls between Diana and William when William was at Eton and um, the conversations he's having with his mother at that point. You know, it's so private. It's a young boy caught in the middle of sort of warring parents. And I just think for... William and those around him, that must be very difficult to know that's being played out um, for sort of the world's entertainment. So I thought that was very difficult. Um, and then I think the, um, what I thought was very awkward was the whole piece around the, the Queen and Penny Romsey and the Duke of Edinburgh and um, the fact that sort of the, the the queen is appearing to have to accept what's going on, um, I think the truth of that was really somewhat different. In that, you know, um, the queen and the duke's marriage remained incredibly strong mm -hmm. throughout their, their whole lives. You know, you mentioned that you know a lot of the people that are portrayed on the the series, and obviously you worked with King Charles uh, quite a bit. Do you know if, have they watched and what is their reaction to uh, seeing their lives portrayed on screen like this? I don't know if they've been watching this series. I know that um, many members of the royal family have watched the series in the past. Um, and I think in the early days, it was seen as being sort of slightly amusing. Um, and, um, but I think as it's got closer to present day, and also, as, as it's become more period, um, I think people have pulled away from it. A lot of people close to the King and Queen this year have said that they won't be watching the series. Um, so I don't imagine the senior royals have watched it this time around. Um, and I think it's, you know, there's, uh, it, it's sort of, it's so near to present day that I think many of the memories, many of the emotions are just too difficult right. to revisit. Um, so I think it's tough. Even, you know, the sort of the whole scene about um, the, you know, Penny Romsey uh, and her, her daughter, Leonora, who very sadly died at you know, age four, you know, is that really something that you, you want to be seeing being played out on television again? Um, so very difficult. I think, it's, I think this series has been very difficult. I think the next one will be even more difficult when we get into Diana's death. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.